new year, new decade. Time for a new programming style, but I think not. Hey everybody, I'm Marty, and recently, and by recently I mean in the past five years, there's been a bit of an uprising against the traditional norm of object-oriented programming. There's plenty of people out there who will love to tell you why object-oriented programming is a hot mess now. I don't know when everybody suddenly decided that object-oriented programming was a real mess. And we're already seeing a large return back to procedural programming. The return of the Jedis. It's all good stuff, except there's just one big problem with it. I don't think anybody really should care that much about your programming style. At the very end of the day, users care about does the program, does it work? Does it work fast? That's about it. But yet, yeah, there's no shortage of opinions to go around, and so here we are at object-oriented programming vs. procedural programming. So object-oriented programming is a, a certain programming style in which data is treated as objects rather than just data. So you think of data more as an entity and it's stored into things called classes, and then those classes create objects, hence object-oriented. It's a world realistic ideal because every physical entity in real life can be considered an object, and so can every entity also in object-oriented programming. So example, if you had a pair of headphones, you would have a headphones class and you treat the data that represents this headphone class as an object. In object oriented programming, you have tools like methods, visibility, inheritance, and polymorphism. And that's about the gist that strictly belongs to object oriented programming. So object oriented programming, it's, it's a good style. I enjoy it a lot and mainly because it's fast coding. It's more of a shut up and code style to it and if done right it leads to accelerated coding and if done wrong it leads to well still accelerated coding just done very wrongly you're going to go in the direction you're heading a lot faster than you would with procedural code procedural programming is a programming style where data is just left mostly as data in procedural programming you have features such as classes namespaces you have functions that modify the data and that's what comprises all of your code and the classes that do exist in procedural programming don't contain any methods and are just data types without any encapsulated functionality procedural programming is also a great style in its own element and it more lends itself to a look before you leap style in which more time is spent pondering the possible functionality of your code rather than writing it. Because procedural programming lacks features such as inheritance and polymorphism, it requires you to more thoroughly think out the predicted functionalities within your program so that you can structure it accordingly. You could say that object-oriented programming is more scientific experimentation, and procedural programming is more just cut once measure twice. You get a very wide range of opinions and very vocal opinions, might I add, when you dare to stick your finger into the Priyana filled waters of programming opinions. As the current situation sits, it's kind of the norm is to do object-oriented programming, and then the underdog and sort of uprising, uh, we're having a coding revolution is the procedural style. Most schools and education institutes will usually teach object-oriented programming and will try and sell it to new programmers because of its list of features such as code reusability, the security that does come with object-oriented programming, and accelerated coding. And then on the other side, you have this opinion that's away from the established norm for programming, and that's that object-oriented programming is actually really bad. Linus Torvalds himself said, C++ is a horrible language. C++ leads to really, really bad design choices. In other words, the only way to do good, efficient, and system level and portable C++ ends up to limit yourself to all the things that are basically available in C. Hey, that's a swear word here. You can check out this list yourself, but this is basically just a compiled list of I believe to be prominent names in the programming world, and they're all saying why object-oriented programming sucks. Object-oriented programming seems to bring at least as many problems to the table as it solves. So the problem with saying that object-oriented programming is bad and should be just done away with is you largely throw the baby with the bathwater entirely when you do that. In fact, I haven't yet seen a logically coherent argument that we should just all abandon object-oriented programming altogether for all cases. It just doesn't seem to exist. Usually people who advocate the abolition of object-oriented programming pick a weirdly sp specific example, such as encapsulation, and then they sprint with it. And then as you watch them dissect their example, you start to think, oh, oh yeah, goodness, yeah, yes, yeah, so that is bad. Object-oriented programming really is terrible. Oh, why have I been programming like this for years? And then you realize you haven't been programming like this. In fact, nobody programs like that that you've seen. Elmo himself from Sesame Street 
couldn't even monkey up a program like that. The examples they include have to be largely over-exaggerated because there's not really a logically cohesive argument against completely just doing away with the programming style. Encapsulation is a favorite example among anti-object-oriented programmers. It's pretty much what it sounds like. It's just where the data is encapsulated into little units. Say you had a 3D game and you had a glass of water in the game. Yeah, I just spilled it. I'll just wipe it up with this sock. In object-oriented design, you would create a class cup and every bit of data that represented the cup and also every function that is strongly associated with the said cup is turned into a method within the class cup. And so you see all the cup data and functionalities of the cup are neatly stored into little containment zones. So then if you did this with most of your code, it would help improve the security because now the state of this cup is safely contained within just the cup class. But in order for the objects within your program to interact with each other, you need some sort of shared state, which is usually done in the form of references. Example, if you had a human in the code and the human needed to take a drink of water, like so, the human would therefore need to have access to the cup. This is where the anti-object order programmers go, ah, 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 ah. See, the state is shared anyway. So what's the point of separating the data into little containment zones and little objects? It's not really encapsulated, then is it? Well, that's missing the point. It's virtually impossible to have an entirely encapsulated program that interacts with each other in some way. And I say virtually because it, it's, it's slightly possible. You're just gonna create a program that's gonna drive you bananas. Encapsulation offers two significant benefits to your code, and the first is that your code becomes more organized. Rather than having a plethora of global variables and functions floating around in the abyss, you can just neatly tuck all the data and functions that are obviously associated with each other into one single encapsulated unit. Think of it like sorting a stack of papers into folders. History papers go in this folder, English goes in this folder, mathematic papers go in this folder. You kind of sort it out all nicely. The second benefit of encapsulation is improved security throughout your code. Encapsulation of a class limits access to its data. I just said data, more data. There's data, data, and now data. By limiting access to your data, you prevent sharing certain components of the class's state with other parts of your program that really shouldn't have access to that state. In most languages, it's known as visibility with the access specifiers public, private, and protected. Visibility seems to be a good approach to shared state, mostly because the alternatives provided by procedural programmers just seem to be obnoxious and don't really work that well or end up implementing some form of object oriented programming anyway. You'll find that they say, oh, you can't, you see, you can't encapsulate all of your data. So then why encapsulate any of it? Yeah, that just really misses the point because obviously you can't just encapsulate all your data. You can't hoard your data in just one section of your code. That generally doesn't work. There is, however, a limit to how far you can encapsulate data and its handling. There's fringe cases out there where, to use the paper and folder example, the programmer shoves one paper per folder. Well, it's not any more organized, now is it? You've got more folders than you do papers! But yeah, that just falls into bad programming habits in general, and the same debacle can be achieved in procedural programming, albeit a bit differently. You'll also get this odd doomsday vibe if you ever ask a procedural programmer about object-oriented programming. They say some pretty apocalyptic stuff like, object-oriented programming has been disastrous to the programming industry. I mean, if you ask me, I would say we're at the peak of software technology. If we think about it, and we go, huh. We currently have cars that can drive themselves, AI that can replicate voice, video, code that can write code itself. Stunning 3D graphics that have never been done before. Hmm. Is this the apocalypse of programming upon us? I, I just don't know what they mean by object-oriented programming has been a disaster. When they say that, it's just really unclear of what they're getting at. Writing off any particular style of programming is just dumb. Odds are, if a style of programming exists, it does have its own use, and it's helpful in its own element. The truth of the matter is, some styles are better for certain tasks than others. If you're developing an OS, well, then yeah, referring to data as entities enters the realm of mystical monkey programming. You would want a more careful and well-thought-out approach anyway, as the architectures you'd be developing are would be very fine-grained and low-level. In this case, object-oriented programming wouldn't offer much and it would be more of a burden to have to adhere to than it would be to a help. Say, however, 
however you are writing a game or a higher level application of some kind, then the better choice is object-oriented programming. It's logically coherent to think of your data as entities in that case, because it's easy to see how the data represents objects within the application. When you're writing a program of any kind, you should have only two goals in mind. The first goal is, does it work to its full potential? Are you obtaining the optimal performance? And is it the best available product for the end user using your current method? The second goal should be, is it readily understandable? Could somebody else decipher your code? In a year from now, could you decipher what you are doing now? Those should be your only two objectives in mind, and then you should base your decision on a programming style off of that. I, I really think that the whole discussion is kind of missing the point of programming and worrying about arbitrary details like, oh no, I'm writing code in a slightly inferior manner. Help, the code monkeys are gonna get me. That just leads to a lot of wasted time pondering if you're coding the right possible way and switching programming styles instead of actually getting code done and getting a product to market that people will enjoy, at the very least complete a goal in your life of some kind. At the end of the day, the user who uses your program isn't gonna care, not even a little bit, if you wrote it in an object-oriented manner or if you wrote it procedurally. Now, obviously, you do need to take some time to consider, is this the best possible route of doing this? Otherwise, you're going to be end up using Batch to write a to-do platformer, like I did. There certainly is place for that kind of discussion, but to say that we should just completely eradicate a certain style of programming just because, well, it's what's popular now it just seems to be a premature decision. So anyway, that's my thoughts on it. If you have any questions or comments, anything to say, just let me know down below. In conclusion, you shouldn't spend too much time thinking, oh, is this API the best API? Is this programming style the best? Is this language the best? Unless you can clearly see that what you're doing isn't working and you're getting nothing done. It honestly doesn't matter which style you use as long as if you get workable results at the end of the day in a timely manner. I hope you enjoyed the video. Code like, make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you next video.